How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. This is still topic 5, energetics and thermochemistry, and in this one we look at thermochemical equations. Let's go. Okay, 5.1, we look at thermochemical equations. We look at exothermic and endothermic thermochemical equations. We discuss delta H and we look at writing a thermochemical equation. The IB understandings, we've looked at a couple already, but in this one we talk about enthalpy change, H, and what it means, and we also talk about the conditions for a delta H calculation. So during a chemical reaction, atoms in the reactants are rearranged into the products. Bonds in the reactants are first broken, which is an endothermic reaction. Bond breaking relies on absorbing energy. Bond forming in the products is an exothermic reaction. Now, the enthalpy is the sum of all of the chemical potential energy, that's all of the energy stored in the bonds, and the sum of its kinetic energy. That's described as its enthalpy. Now, an exothermic reaction, the reactants have more energy enthalpy than the products. So the reactants have higher amounts of energy, the products lower amounts of energy. So when they re react, we release that energy in the form of heat. An endothermic reaction, the reactants have less energy, less enthalpy than the products. So we have to add in a large amount of energy to get that reaction to go ahead. Remember that an exothermic reaction releases energy, it starts to get hot, and an endothermic reaction absorbs energy, so it's cold. And it's absorbing energy to form the products. So the standard enthalpy change, delta H naught, is... The enthalpy change when one mole of reactants form products under standard conditions. And standard conditions are considered to be the normal, most pure, stable state measured at 100 kPa and 298 Kelvin. The energy change, the enthalpy change, delta H0, is measured in the unit kilojoules per mole. So it's essentially energy divided by mole. And whenever we have the enthalpy change, we have a sign, either positive or negative, that refers to endo or exo. So in the first equation, we have 6 moles of carbon dioxide plus 6 moles of water forms 1 mole of glucose plus 6 moles of oxygen. In that process, we absorb 2,803 kilojoules per mole. In the second equation, we have 1 mole of glucose plus 6 moles of oxygen turns to 6 moles of carbon dioxide and 6 moles of water. Now, it's the exact reverse of the reaction above. So if we reverse a reaction, we actually just change the delta H. So in this case, this would release 2,803 kilojoules of energy. In the final one, we have 1 mole of methanol plus 1.5 moles of oxygen forms 1 mole of carbon dioxide and 2 moles of water. And in that process, we release 726 kilojoules per mole. Because methanol is a fuel, this is known as the delta H naught C, the delta H of combustion. So it's the enthalpy change when one mole of a fuel is burnt in excess oxygen. So we've got our one mole of methanol, we've burnt it in oxygen, and it's released 726 kilojoules per mole. Now, if I've got a thermochemical equation, I might be asked to draw what we call an energy profile diagram. And an energy profile diagram shows the relationship of the reactants and the products. So here we have methane being reacted with oxygen, like in the lab. We have our reactants, methane and oxygen. Because it's exothermic, they have more energy than the products. And we get this little curve which has a hump in it. And then it forms the products, which are carbon dioxide and H2O. Now this little bit here, this is described as the activation energy the EA. Now the activation energy is how much energy we need to provide to get the reaction to begin. Remember I said at the start of this video that the breaking of bonds in reactants is endothermic. So endothermic means we have to add in some energy to break the bonds in the reactants to get them to form products. Now the activation energy describes the minimum amount of energy required to break the bonds in the reactants to then form products. It's like the minimum energy required to start the reaction occurring. Once it starts occurring, it releases the energy and forms the products. 
The difference between the reactants and the products, well, this is the delta H, the change in enthalpy. And in this case, the change in enthalpy for this reaction is 890 kilojoules. Negative, meaning that it has released energy. It's an exothermic reaction. The reaction has got hot. If we have an endothermic reaction, the activation energy is even more important. So an example of an endothermic reaction is dissolving. Lots of things that dissolve are actually endothermic reactions. So our reactants have less energy than our products. So we get sort of the opposite of the curve from before, where we have a really big hump and then a, very, a smaller delta H. Now here, the activation energy is very, very large. It's the distance from the reactants all the way to the tip of that curve. Because it's endothermic, we're breaking stronger bonds. There's stronger bonds in the reactants, so we have to add in a lot more energy to break those bonds. The delta H is still just the difference between the reactants and the products, and in an endothermic case, that will be a positive value. The products have more energy than the reactants. So a couple of things to remember. When a chemical reaction occurs, the following must happen. Bonds within the reactants are broken, and that's an endothermic process, bond-breaking endothermic. New bonds are formed when the products are made. That's an exothermic process. When new bonds form, it releases energy. Now, if stronger bonds form in the products than are broken in the reactants, heat is released, and it's an exothermic reaction. Now for an exothermic reaction, the products are more stable. They have less energy. They have stronger bonds in the products. So more stable means stronger bonds. If we have an endothermic reaction, an endothermic reaction, the reactants are more stable. There's stronger bonds in the reactants. An easy way to remember this is like giving a kid red cordial. If he's got lots and lots of energy, he's unstable. He's got weaker bonds. Same kind of idea. A typical kind of paper one question for this kind of exothermic, endothermic is when we have a number of different uh, systems and we need to work out if it's endothermic or exothermic. So ionization. Ionization is when we have an atom in its gaseous state and it forms a gaseous ion and releases an electron. What do we need for that? We need energy, so that must be endo. Ice melting, where we have the water as a solid turning into water as a liquid. How can we get that to occur? We have to heat it up, so that's an endothermic process. It absorbs the energy. If we're boiling water, we're turning it from a liquid to a gas, we're breaking the hydrogen bonds. Again, it must absorb energy, endothermic. If we have an, the, sublimation, the subliming of iodine going from a solid to a gas, again, it's got to absorb energy, it's endothermic. If we want to freeze water though, we want to go from a liquid to a solid. So what we actually have to do is release some of our energy. So that would be an exothermic process. Okay, top volume two, some top tips. If you're unsure, draw the energy profile diagram. It helps a lot. And remember that exo releases and endo absorbs. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.